Theodora Zagarakis was at the heart of the Greek side that triumphed at UEFA Euro 2004. Zagarakis was awarded Player of the Tournament by UEFA for his eye-catching performances. An indomitable but stylish defensive midfielder, renowned for his combative and tough tackling style of football, the Greek midfielder's speciality was to break down play. Blessed with an ability to read a game, Zagarakis always seemed one step ahead of his opponents. We highlight him here against the Czech Republic at Euro 2004. His positional sense excellent as he wins the ball. He then uses possession wisely as he moves into the space ahead. As he gains control once more, he plays the ball simply and effectively, creating an attack down the left wing. Gifted with a graceful technique, Zagorakis was just as adept at keeping possession as he was with winning it. And his vision often led to goals. He demonstrated this perfectly in the quarter-final of 2004. First a delightful touch pass, Pichente Lizarazu took him into space. Then a beautifully weighted pinpoint cross for Angelus Caristeas set up the eventual winner over the holders, France. Euro 2004 revitalised the fortunes of Zagarakis. The midfielder secured a high-profile move to Italian club Bologna after the championships. He retired from football in 2007, having made 120 appearances for his country. Born in Madeira on the 5th of February 1985, Portugal's Cristiano Ronaldo has played at club level for Sporting Lisbon and Manchester United. But it was at UEFA Euro 2004 that he became an international superstar. His breathtaking game is based on a thrilling combination of speed, strength and mesmeric footwork, ranging from quick far back heels, swerving runs, a touch of the unexpected and the now trademark step over. He also possesses the vision to create chances for teammates, as demonstrated by this delightful curling cross played into space with the outside of his boot. A natural goal scorer in addition, Ronaldo's got the lot. And having played a starring role four years ago, he's sure to be one of the leading lights at UEFA Euro 2008. A master in the art of goal scoring, Ruud van Nisseroy is one of the world's most prolific strikers. A cunning goal poacher who has plundered well over 250 goals in a career playing for teams like Manchester United and Real Madrid. In international football, van Nisseroy boasts a strike ratio of a goal almost every other game for the Netherlands. The first major tournament he played in was in Portugal at UEFA Euro 2004. He was one of only two players to score goals in all three group encounters. His intelligence and positional awareness in and around the penalty area make him almost impossible for defenders to track. Van Nisseroy is also sharp enough to use the offside rule to his advantage. Here, as the move begins, he's clearly offside. Then, as the ball is played down the line to Iron Robin, he makes sure he's on side again and available for the pass. The result, an easy strike for an astute predator. His natural finishing ability is renowned throughout the globe, and as this strike against Germany shows, not all of his goals are tap-ins. Van Nisseroy has already been top scorer in the Dutch, English and Spanish leagues. With a few years still ahead of him, there's every chance he can replicate that on the international stage. <laughs> Midfielder Antonin Panenko was the catalyst behind Czechoslovakia's success at the UEFA 1976 European Football Championships. Although Panenka's best known for scoring the winning penalty in the final shootout against West Germany that year, it would be doing him an injustice to say that was his only achievement. Panenka made his name as a midfielder with an uncanny ability to pass the ball incredibly accurately. He wasn't the quickest of players, but his speed of thought caught out opponents on many occasions. Here, against Germany in UEFA Euro 80, he turns back on his marker to make some space for himself before spraying a 41-metre cross-field pass into the path of his teammate. He was particularly influential from set pieces and had a reputation for great free kicks. 
This one, in the game against the Greeks, is delivered with enough power to get over the wall, but then dips to beat the keeper low to his right-hand side. And although he gets a touch, he's powerless to keep it out. The famous penalty in 1976 that handed the Czechs the title sparked a wave of imitations. At the moment Penenka strikes, Meyer is still upright, but crucially already beginning to move to his left. With cheek and the coolest of nerves, he calmly lobs the ball up over the keeper to make history and make Czechoslovakia the champions of Europe. Creative midfielder Thomas Hessler was Germany's predominant creative force of the 90s. UEFA Euro 92 showcased his speciality, the dead ball. This last-minute thunderbolt against the old Soviet Union, known at the time as the CIS, saved Germany from defeat in their opening fixture. Hessler could also whip in a corner kick, here setting up Jurgen Klinsmann in their Euro 92 clash with the Netherlands. In the semi-final against host Sweden, Hessler opened the scoring in spectacular fashion with yet another free kick. The midfielder generating incredible swerve and dip, sending the ball 23 metres up over the wall and then low into the net past Swedish keeper Thomas Ravelli. Part of the German side crowned European champions in 1996, Hessler appeared in four European football championships and was central to German success in his long tenure in international football. Thomas Brolin was one of Sweden's most important players of the early 90s. The diminutive forward was idolised by Italian supporters during his five-year spell with Parma, and during this period his eye for goal and ability to open up defences made him a vital player for Sweden. At UEFA Euro 92, the 22-year-old Brolin finished joint top scorer with three goals in Sweden's four games. The pick of them came against England. Brolin's finish taking Sweden into the semi-finals. The goal showcases his ability as a playmaker and striker. He starts the move from deep with some excellent one-touch passing. Using his teammate Martin Dahlin to good effect, he plays a 1-2 and moves into space. His instinctive shot is a delight, placing the ball beyond goalkeeper Chris Woods with precision. The injury plague Brolin was forced to retire at the age of just 28, but the golden boy of Swedish football will long be remembered for his influence on the 1992 championships. Didier Deschamps captained France to victories at the 1998 FIFA World Cup and UEFA Euro 2000. Highly regarded for his defensive qualities, the midfielder was renowned for turning defence into attack. Here against Romania in Euro 96, he wins possession in midfield and suddenly the French pose a threat. We highlight him here as the Romanians break, with Deschamps dominating the middle third. Aware of the danger, he's quick to spot the 1-2, and he calmly wins possession. Now it's the French team who can advance. Capable of moments of creativity, here he passes almost 50 metres to Thierry Henry against the Czech Republic in Euro 2000. And against Sweden, as far back as Euro 92, the Frenchman displays an eye for the spectacular, attempting to lob Thomas Ravelli from near the halfway line. Integral to French success over an 11-year period, Didier Deschamps remains one of France's finest ever captains.